Welcome to the Mount Pleasant Podcast, featuring discussions and interviews about the people, places, and events that make Mount Pleasant such a special place. This is the Mount Pleasant Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Cleary, and all thanks to the great people of Mount Pleasant Magazine, I get the honor and the privilege of introducing you to Mount Pleasant, the people who make it such a special place to do business, to work, and even to live. We're introducing you to Mount Pleasant's best on the Mount Pleasant Podcast. That time of year, my favorite time of year, maybe yours as well, it's time to get to the beach. You might have a challenge getting there, but actually it doesn't have to be a challenge thanks to our friends at Carta. I'm Brian Cleary. Today on the Mount Pleasant Podcast, we're going to talk about getting to the beach and the fact that Carta has got a special route set up for you. And who better to talk to you about it than the chairman of Carta? We invited and he was happy to join us. Mike Seekings is here today. Mike, first of all, the idea for the shuttle that is the Beach Reach shuttle, where did that uh, come from? Well, so summer is now upon us, and so is what we're calling Beach Reach 3.0. This is the third season of running a free shuttle from the Mount Pleasant Town Center to the Isle of Palms right there at Charleston County Park, right there at 14th Street. So um, it, it was born of really our desire and the people who live in this community's need to get to the beach in the summertime in a way that's convenient and affordable, and, and we had the resource to do that. So it's been really a great program. I think that this third year will be bigger and better than ever, and we're off to a great start. And the fact that it's free, one, I don't think everybody realizes that, but two, how is it that you're able to keep the beach shuttle free? Well, so thanks to our friends and partners in Mount Pleasant and the Isle of Palms and to the board of Carta, we saw again, this was a need in our system. And bringing people to the beach in a way that's super convenient to them. Um, we were able to pull the resources together and it was easy to do to offer this as a free service. And by the way, our friends at Town Center who allow everyone who rides from the Mount Pleasant side to park for free. So really the entire experience is hassle-free, easy to get to, very convenient, use our bus, our air conditioning, our gas, our Wi-Fi, and we get you to the Isle of Palms quickly, efficiently, safely, and easily. And you mentioned the fact that the partnership has made this happen. Let's be honest, in governments, it's not always easy to get everybody on the same page, but you folks of CARTA have worked with Mayor Haney, worked with the IOP. That's gotta be a, a great feeling knowing that you were able to bring it all together the way you were. I, I will tell you, Mayor Haney and Mayor Pounds have, are, have been the biggest supporters of this and really got out ahead of it and said, we're in, we wanna supply, we wanna, be part of it and they put their money where their mouth was they have put some money in the game they've put resource towards it and they've been huge cheerleaders and supporters so thanks to them the card board again which is made up by the way of principally not exclusively but principally elected officials this is something that was has been very popular with us and we're happy to do it so chairman i'm getting ready to go to the beach so i'm going to park there for free at the mount pleasant town center going to uh, jump on the shuttle and this will be every weekend throughout the summer can you give me a little idea hey i've got a big surfboard am i going to be able to bring that on the bus give me some do's and don'ts so, if you wouldn't mind well we would ask everybody first off to know oh yes it's every weekend we started memorial day weekend so we're into the season every weekend between now and labor day including july 4th weekend which is thursday and friday um Go out to town center, bring sort of a reasonable amount of stuff with you, your family and your friends, big surfboards, maybe not so much, but a boogie board, beach chairs, a small cooler, all the things that you want to have a big day at the beach. The shuttles start to run, the bus starts to run at 9.15 on Saturday mornings from the from um, town center and on Sunday mornings at 9.55, 9.45. So come on out and they run all day long. They're circulator routes on the hour till uh, 5.30 in the afternoon on Saturdays and 5.55 on Sundays. And you mentioned the fact that the buses, of course, air conditioned, gotta love that. Not everybody may understand or really even think about it, but Wi-Fi on the bus. We've got Wi-Fi on the bus, we've got air conditioning, it's our gas, so it really is a comfortable ride. I've done it a number of times. We rode it the other day, it's a really easy route. So um, this is a way for people who otherwise don't wanna have to worry about finding a parking place, paying for it, all of those things that now come with going to the beach in the summertime in the Charleston region, this just takes away a couple of the stresses and the cost of, of having a big day, a full day and a fun day at the Isle of Palms. I love 
Vibes loves VFW. Post 3137, the only post on the coast. Island Vibes. Yo, Island Vibes right here at BFW. Yo, yo, yo. You're listening to the Mount Pleasant Podcast. This is where the pages of Mount Pleasant Magazine come alive. Thanks for joining me, Brian Cleary, today on the Mount Pleasant Podcast. We're making it easier. Well, actually, it's not us. It's Carta and the town of Mount Pleasant and the Isle of Palms making it easier for you to get to the beach thanks to the new, well, not new, it's three years in the making, but it's yeah, continuing to get better every year. It is the Beach Reach Shuttle from Carta and the chairman of the board of directors with Carta, Mike Seekings, joins us. Now, chairman, uh, you're also a member of the Charleston City Council. How long have you been with council? Hard to believe I'm now in my 15th year as a member of Charleston City Council. I remember when I was first selected, I was the very junior guy. Now, all of a sudden, boom, five, 15 years later, here I am, um, one of the senior members. But it's been an incredible journey, a real honor to represent the people of Charleston and to get involved in the region, including with issues that affect Mount Pleasant. So it's it's been, it's been a great honor and, and really something. <laughs> it really has been. 15 years, you got to be doing something right. Fill us in on your background for people who don't know. Are you originally from the Low Country or where did you come from? I'm not originally from the Low Country. I'm a um, son of a military father and a mother who followed along, um, born and raised in England, believe it or not, wow. and came to the States um, for just before high school. And then I've been in South Carolina ever since I started my professional career, which is when I'm not being a councilman and chasing after Carter and a few other things, I'm a lawyer by trade. So I've, I've been in um, South Carolina for 30, shoot, 33 years now, 34 years. But you're still not a local, as we all know, <laughs> that doesn't happen. Uh -huh. Maybe the other thing you should be doing is uh, teaching a course and maybe you could help me out time management, Carter director, city of Charleston council. Where do you find time to get to the beach? Well, um, luckily, it's easy to get there and I can go sit on a car to bus and catch up with all the other things I'm doing using the free Wi-Fi and the air conditioning on the trip in and out. So um, it's been, a, you know, it's been a joy to be part of the low country. This is a great place to live. It's been fun to be on the front lines, to see us grow as, our, as a community, to address some of the challenges we have. And really, I have to say, 15 years forward, this is a much better place today than it was 15 years ago. And it started out at a pretty darn good spot. So... Um, just again, love being a love living here and love being part of it. Amen to that. Now, I don't detect any kind of English accent. So when you came over from England, or I guess you never started with an English accent, or was there ever a time when you were young that you kind of had that British talk? I did. And, you know, if we go back and visit my family on my father's side, who's still all in England and perhaps go up a pint or two at the pub, I can I can put it on a little bit. But uh, my mom's not English. My dad was. And um, so I've sort of I say mid-Atlantic Ridge, right? Somewhere in between. Now, everybody that comes on the podcast, we ask them one very hard hitting, important question. All and right. that is South Carolina or Clemson? Where are you lined up oh, in that? Go Gamecocks. That's not even a close one for me. Sorry to you Clemson fans out there, but the first job I ever had in South Carolina was clerking for federal judge, then federal judge Donald Russell, who was at one point in his career the president of the University of South Carolina. And he took me to my first big time SEC football game, which was South Carolina against Georgia. And I've been hooked ever since. So go Cox. Mike Seekings is the chairman of Carta and our guest today on the Mount Pleasant Podcast. I'm Brian Cleary. We're talking about getting to the beach in Carta this summer, as they have the last couple of summers, making that easy with the Beach Reach Shuttle. Now, Mike, beyond the shuttle, the Beach Reach Shuttle in Mount Pleasant, there is Carta service all over the Mount Pleasant area. And in fact, you've got two parking rides set up in, in the town. Can you explain to people who may not be familiar with everything that Carta offers what a parking ride is? So a park and ride is an opportunity for you to park your car again in our, at our park and rides for free and then ride our system, which is $2 a ride. It's not expensive. It's very easy. And in Mount Pleasant, you know, we're growing our system. Public transit is all about demand and need. And in Mount Pleasant, demand is growing, particularly in the hospitality industry, people going to school. So if we have park and ride opportunities, which we have two in Mount Pleasant, Bring your car over, park it, leave it there for the day um, and get to wherever you're going. And it also then connects to the rest of our system. Mount Pleasant, by the way, as it grows, 
along with the region, is a place that we at Carter are very in tune to. Mayor Haney has been a very active member of the Carter board, as now as Council Member Bronstein, Bronstein to go after expanding our service over Mount Pleasant. So you'll see it expand over the course of time and uh, just keep an eye on it. More to come. A lot going on. Not, it's not the Carter that it was 15 years ago. Well, I can certainly back that up because I've lived in Mount Pleasant now for 15, 16 years. And when I originally got here, the Carter route would only go to the town center. But I don't know if we're supposed to call it North Mount Pleasant, but you've certainly expanded out there. And that route now runs even out to the uh, no, the Roper St. Francis Hospital out there. It does. And that uh, that route, as we've seen, steady growth and ridership on it. So, again, as the region grows and demand grows, I think you're going to see a lot more service over in Mount Pleasant. We're trying to get a grip and a handle on being able to serve the, the routes that we currently have. We're in the process of replacing our fleet with battery electric buses. When I first took over as, as chairman, we had the old, literally, not figuratively, this isn't um, anecdotal, it's true. We had the oldest fleet of buses of any system in America. Our young buses came from the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Um, some of them had two, three million miles on them. We committed to transitioning our fleet to battery electric and upgrading it and modernizing it. We're about two thirds of the way through that process at $600,000 a bus. So once we've got it all modernized, then we can expand our routing uh, to keep up with the demand that a growing region naturally has. And this region, my goodness, is growing, right? I mean, uh, we, we see that every day. Chairman Seekings, let's uh, run through some other things that CARTA offers that people may not be familiar with. Can you explain to me what CARTA On Demand is? CARTA On Demand is a program that we have for seniors defined as 55 and older, for which I qualify by, oh my goodness, now 10 years. Uh, or for... <laughs> or for others who um, have, have accessibility um, challenges. Card On Demand is a partnership with Uber, where if you sign up through at right, go to ridecarta.com and qualify, that you can then get rides from Uber to and from places you need to go in our service area for a capped fare of um, $5 a ride. So it's a pretty good program. It's been very popular. We've seen steady growth. So, but if you're a Carta Telluride rider, you're automatically qualified. Or if you're 55 or over, go sign up and you can use Carta On Demand as part and adjunct to the major service and the regular service that we provide. And you talked about Carta as it's developed and we're talking about electric buses now instead of the 1996 Atlantic Olympic buses. Carta's really getting into the century though. You've got an app that people can use. Use the transit app. Um, it'll show you where the buses are in real time. Easy to download. Um, show you where your routes are. If you're at the stop, how long it's going to be before you get there. So, you know, and there's so much more. As you know, we're, we're working on the first ever in this region. In fact, in this state, we have never had a large scale transit project. Well, Low Country Rapid Transit is coming to a community near you. It's our community. Um, it's going to be, once it's up and running, the longest single route um, rapid transit, low country, low rapid transit project in the country. Um, so we're going sort of from zero to 100 really quickly. So a lot going on in a growing region and low country rapid transit really will be the centerpiece of it. Um, and it will it will change the, the face of this community when it comes to accessibility, transit and the way we grow and develop around transit lines. If you dig deep into Carta, and I think there's some things that you and I have already talked about that some or maybe not everybody is aware of. Is there another service? Is there something else that you think that people don't realize Carta does, Chairman, that you wish people knew more about? Well, we're out there. Uh, I know we're talking about pleasant audience, but for instance, if you come downtown to shop um, and you need to get around the peninsula, we have service all over the peninsula that crisscrosses circulator routes. Um, that are free, the system entirely free downtown. So if you're if you're coming to see us, hop on the bus. Like I said, we're growing, our routing's growing. Um, the transit app will tell you where we are, where we're going. Shelters are popping up all over the place, including in Mount Pleasant, some really great shelters. You've seen the new projects, the new work that's just been done right there when you get off the bridge coming down Coleman Boulevard. We put two brand new shelters up there. So um, it is we're, we're growing with the community. We're responding to the demands. And again, love to hear from anybody out there. What else you'd like to see? And at the centerpiece in the summertime is getting to the beach for free. So back to where we started. The beach reach is just one of the things that we know that people want. Uh, and we brought it to them. 
We're talking with the Carter Board of Directors Chairman. He is Mike Seekings, also a member of the Charleston uh, City Council. And he's our guest today on the Mount Pleasant Podcast with me, Brian Cleary, as we talk about the Beach Reach Shuttle that's now in its third year, free service for you to go from the Mount Pleasant Town Center down to the Beach of the ILP, helping out with traffic, getting there in air-conditioned style. Uh, Chairman Seekings, as you move forward, do you find... I guess we call them Generation Z, whatever your young people are. They're used to using Uber and Lyft. They're not driving as much. Will they also, or are they also being encouraged to become uh, riders of Carta? And are you seeing more of them on board? So a few ways you grow public transit, right? One is organically, you give a product to people that's safe, convenient, something that they want. Two is people who come from other parts of the country or the world that are used to using transit. And the third is introducing transit to young people. And we've had a number of programs to do that, not, not least which is students riding for free. So we've seen an increase in ridership that is very steep recently. And it sort of cuts across generations. We do believe younger generations are uninterested, um, maybe less interested, I should say, than our generations were in having cars. Um, they like to get around and have access to things like we're doing today, their computers, their iPhones, while they're being taken somewhere by somebody else. That's why Uber is so popular. And that's why public transit is popular. Um, both of those sort of adjunct with each other and work hand in hand. And if you ride down, even downtown on the free um, shuttles, see a lot of younger people. So yeah, I think that I think that the next generations behind us um, will we'll have transit integrated into their sort of daily lives. So Chairman Cheekings, you've been there 15 years now. I'm sure that's been kind of a like a blink of the eye because so much has changed since yeah. uh, you uh, started with Carta. What what do you think your biggest challenge is right now moving forward? Well, not just with Carta, but in our region is managing and keeping up with growth and making sure that we keep an eye on what's most important, and that is taking care of the people who live here. Um, you know, we're a tourist economy, we're a tourist destination, um, lots of people coming to visit us and the, the visit's only as good as the people who live here. So just making sure that we remain a vibrant, livable community. And sort of when you flip the page to public transit, if I were to ask your listeners today, when you travel somewhere else in the country, in the world, what's one of the first five things you'd expect to find? What are the five things that make a good and great city or community? almost invariably you'd write somewhere in there transit and mobility. So being able to build that infrastructure here so that we are truly a modern, leading, cutting edge city that's a great place to live, work and play, public transit and, and mobility has got to be part and parcel of that. We're not so naive to think people are getting out of their cars, they're not, but giving people safe, convenient alternatives in the modern era, that's what we're striving for, that's what we're looking towards. And I think, one step at a time are achieving that. So Chairman Seekings, as we come up on another beach weekend, where am I more likely to find you? On the beach, on the boat, on the pool, or are you just a, an inland person and you relax that way? Well, you might find me in a number of different places in any given weekend because there's so much to do in this community, yes. right? I like to mm -hmm. take advantage of all that. This is a festival weekend in Charleston, Spoleto, so probably see me at an event there. Invariably, you'll see me riding at least once on the beach reach to see what's cooking and probably spend an hour or two with our friends out there at the county park. Um, spend some time at home, you know, all the things that we love to do as as people who live here in the low country, you, you'll find me doing at least one or two of those things just about any weekend of the year. The beach certainly is on the list. And by the way, I'm a huge runner. So one of the things that I've used the beach reach for is I go park at town center, take the bus out the Isle of Palms, run out there on the beach and out the Isle of Palms and then come on back. It's a great way to do it. So lots of different ways to enjoy the beach and access, right? Wow, that is an amazing idea. That would work out yeah. perfect. Get the time on the beach, not have to worry about parking and stuff. And oh, the Beach great. Reach Shuttle, it's the place to be. And so, again, that's going to be, we'll be able to take advantage of this for free every summer or every weekend all summer. That's right. Every single weekend, Friday, I mean, Saturday, Sunday, and holiday Mondays. And by the way, bonus on July 4th, Thursday and Friday, town center to Isle of Palms and back on a circulator route, all free, all the time. Come on out, ride with us, please. Love to see you. And remember that free beach ride will include free Wi-Fi. So on your smart device, you can be listening to the Mount Pleasant podcast. When you get to the beach, bring along your free copy, of course, of Mount Pleasant magazine and enjoy that on the beach as well. And, and for that, we thank not just Mayor Haney and Mayor Pounds, but uh, Chairman Seeking, you and the entire uh, board of directors with Carta. Thanks for all you do. And thanks for joining us today here on the Mount Pleasant podcast. 
Well, thank you for having me. Look forward to talking anytime and see everybody out there on Beach Reach. Have a great summer and be safe. It's beach time. Take advantage of it and take the Mount Pleasant Magazine along with you. This is where the pages of Mount Pleasant Magazine come alive. The Mount Pleasant Podcast. I'm Brian Cleary. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for spending your time with the Mount Pleasant Podcast. Your community, your podcast. Listen to past and future episodes at mountpleasantpodcast.com.